to in share. In our bedroom. Yeah, in our bedroom, actually. I don't think we filmed here together. No? I found favorites with you here before. Yeah, but a different angle. So yeah, different angle. Today's angle reveals baby Alexa in the background who is peacefully sleeping for now. <laughs> um, at the moment, I feed her on demand. So basically, it means whenever she wakes up, whenever she asks for it, I feed her. So obviously, there is no set schedule. You don't know when you can film or when you can do anything, which is fine because that's how it is with newborns. Later in their life, of course, you establish more of a schedule. But at this point, we're gonna attempt to film this video and see how it goes. We don't know how long we'll be able to go for, but we'll do our best. Plus the lighting might, lighting might change, so we'll see what happens, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. Yeah, because we really wanted to share the story. The birth and story. Yeah, the reason Alex is here is because truly it was an experience that we we'll both shared together. So I thought it would only be fair that Alex is here with me sharing the birth story because you were part of it. Like you were 50% part of everything that happened on that day. So are you ready, Alex? Yeah, let's begin. You ready to share? Yeah. Okay. Just before I start, I want to say this might be a bit graphic and very, really? very... Well, I'm going to share everything, okay. basically. So if you're not into graphic information or if there's anything that bothers you about hearing about blood and things like that and birth and maybe pain, then I this is my warning <laughs> before I start because I'm going to be completely honest about the whole experience and how it happened and what happened on the day of the birth. And even before, I, I want to go back a little bit because my situation was a bit different. I think it's important to address that, right? What? That I was a bit, well, late by this time. Oh, okay, okay. But I think it's important that I start with that because I think it's a very important point to cover. So what happens obviously when you get pregnant, you're given a due date. And due date is truly just sort of a guess yes, date right. that the doctor estimates. Obviously it's based on the day of your last period and all that stuff. But it's usually, I think, what was it, 5% of babies are born? On a due date. Something like five per, only 5% of babies are born on that due date. The rest are split before, you know, they're born either before the due date or after the due date. And some are late, which is considered over 42 weeks. And mostly, they said, from the statistics reading, 80% I think of births are after the 40 yeah. weeks for the first uh, births. Yeah, especially yeah. the first birth. So obviously I was given a date. I never shared that date with anyone, but because I was sharing on weeks. Instagram weeks, everyone could guess, you know, <laughs> that it's within that week. So I got to week 40, actually when I got to week 39, almost every week closer to the end of my pregnancy, I had to go and have an appointment with my midwives. Okay, so the plan was for my birth, obviously, you know, I, I should mention that, natural birth with midwives. And because we travel a lot, we have private healthcare. So I thought, I'll just use private healthcare in the UK, even though I just wanted to give birth in a birth center, which actually is NHS, public. which is public. It's really nice. Yeah, it's super nice. In that room, you just have a jacuzzi and like sort of a mattress on the floor. There's no medical equipment, nothing like that. I wanted it to be very natural, very, you know, effortless experience. <laughs> So that was the plan is, you know, I would see midwives every once in a while, closer to the end every week. And then as I was getting to the end of my pregnancy, so I think week 39 already, they started telling me this. They started sort of asking me if I want an induction. And basically what an induction is, is they go inside of there, um, I believe it's the cervix, they put some gel. That's a soft induction. It's like yeah. an introduction, right? So they, they do this gel that's supposed to induce you to have labor. But this is a 39 weeks. Like I'm not even supposed to have the baby by 40 but this is something that is practiced I think everywhere in the world which really truly saddens me because I think the baby is supposed to be born on the day that its baby is supposed to be born and most of the cases is going to be not on the due date so anyways I refused on week 39 they offered it again on week 40 they offered it again on week 41 then I was getting to week 42 which again to the hospital and the whole medical world it's sort of a, how would you say it? It's a tricky date because a lot of them have insurance. And well, insurance- like, Yeah, it's like what they classify as like mm -hmm. high risk. In reality, uh, once again, with births, up to 42 weeks is not really overdue. Like over 40 weeks is not really overdue. It's that only after 42 weeks, technically, it gets, this is a official overdue kind of thing. And the reason so, I really wanted to bring it up, sorry for interrupting you, because I know so many people obsessed with dates and I saw this on Instagram, even as I was pregnant, so many ladies out there who follow me on Instagram or also pregnant and they're like, I'm at 40 plus seven and I'm stressing so much. And it's like, it shouldn't be stressful. Like this whole experience is about relaxing and letting go. And I think that was the only part of my pregnancy when I got stressed 
like the whole pregnancy I had such an amazing experience but it's when I got closer to the due date and past the due date again I'll keep putting the quotation marks <laughs> because the baby came when the baby wanted to come and she's perfectly fine. Is when I, I started getting stressed because like there's a lot of pressure put on you to be induced, to you know push you into this labor that the child might not even be ready for. What happens after is I, I know it's like such a long story. I know. I, this video is gonna be long. That's another thing I wanted to warn you. <laughs> so you wanna talk about what happened at 42 when we had the doctor's appointment? Well, throughout the whole process, Mimi says yeah. like that we're, we're, we're partners in every facet yeah, of life, Alex business. Alex came with me to every appointment. Yeah. Why well, skip, I think, one, one appointment? You did skip missed. one. Yeah, but most of them, I was there, we were talking together, and at this, it's towards the last thing, like I said, every appointment, they were getting a little more aggressive in terms of, like, induction. Just checking. Yeah, <laughs> checking, baby, as Mimi was saying. I remember, I think it was at week 41, one of the midwives was like, so let's talk about induction, induction date, and she starts talking, like, high risk and all that stuff. No, right away, she's like, well, now your chances of having a stillbirth is gonna be massive. And like the way she, she said it, it's she so very, dramatic. So right away, and was like I said, this was the only stage that became stressful for you. I right away, I, I stopped her and I said, hey, like you have to stop with the exaggeration and everything else. Like we looked at the statistics and everything. It's not as bad as you make it seem to be. Like it's not the end of the world. Because <laughs> I, I just said, wanna add to that. That's one thing that they will scare you with. And I mean the hospitals, they will scare you with the stillbirth. So obviously, there is some statistics done in like 1958 that say that if you reach 42 weeks after 42 weeks, there's a higher chance of stillbirth, but it's, it's, it's not a massive jump. It is a higher chance, but it's not massive as they make it seem. Yeah, and the, I think the most important thing- And nobody that, talks about yeah, what it, happens if you get induced, what can happen to the baby, what can happen to you. So the risks are on both sides. Exactly. So anyway, so I talked to the midwife, as I told her like, you gotta chill. <laughs> Please let us speak to somebody who's not gonna make such exaggerated claims and actually make us feel calm in this matter. And there was a different midwife, the head midwife, she's super cool. And she talked to us, so it's totally fine, we understand, we just want the best for the baby. And she was really understanding. And she just said that, you know, as long as you're comfortable and we're comfortable and we just check up once in a while, like every other day or so. You can go for as long as yeah, you want. Yeah, you can go as long as you want. We're like, sweet, cool, let's do it. And so I guess the next thing we get to uh, now 42. Yeah. And we, we go into the hospital, we're doing these checks. And now without anything addressed, the doctor comes. So the doctor that was assigned to us comes. And this is like, and the yeah. doctor is only a sign if something goes wrong, right? Like I never really, I only saw her once just to meet her, but there was no reason even for her. You would only see her if obviously at birth, you know, there's some kind of an emergency and then she has to perform a cesarean or anything else. So the doctor came. So then she, she wants to meet us at 42. Yeah. This was she like didn't, right she didn't want to meet us, she just showed up. Yeah, she showed up. Right? And, and, know, and it was really interesting. It was uh, the reason I think you want to share this now. Yeah, I want yeah. to share this. It was really interesting because, especially because we're in private, it was really interesting because basically to cut it short said, I don't have insurance past 42 weeks. I can't be your doctor, you can't be in private. That's it. I, so I, I, unless you want to be induced today, you don't have a doctor anymore. So right away, right away, kind of everything unraveled, and I understood that the whole pressure that's going on weeks weeks is really about insurance. It's really a business. It's not about you, it's not, the patient. It's not about yeah. the baby. So it's, it's to protect the hospital, the business, the doctor as a business to help them out. And of course, some of it, of course, is to help the baby. Don't get me wrong. But I'm like, oh, like I kind of laughed right actually right away. I'm like, oh my, like, I because it, it was so funny that she actually said. Insurance. She actually said that her insurance is runs yeah, she out. Said my so she's like, no and she's like, me. and she's like, unless you can find a different doctor who has insurance past forty two weeks, and then she's like, you can go find the doctor yourself. I'm like, are At you forty two like, weeks? Lady, right? I'm like, lady, are you crazy? I'm like, forty two weeks. She's about to give birth any day now. You're gonna. And imagine again how stressful that is to somebody who's like pregnant and laid by society. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, that was the whole thing. We said, cool. And then. We had a little whole spiel with her. I, we both spoke to her. I put a little pressure. And then she tr she's like, okay, you know what? I think the best thing for you guys would be actually go to public. And uh, I'm going to introduce you to the head midwife there. She introduced us to the head midwife. The head midwife at NHS was super cool. She was really understanding. Amazing. We met with her. Yeah. For the first time, I felt like there was no pressure for me to be induced, have the baby now. All those things that were like put pressure on me from week 39. This woman was incredible. She's so wonderful. And this is, by the way, at the Chelsea Westminster Hospital here in, in the, London. In London. Yeah. Really nice public service. 
and it just made me realize that, like just because something is private doesn't necessarily mean it's better I prefer now public health care and I guess she does too she decided literally because she came at 42 plus 3 so I told Alex this girl is very humble she's like I don't want no private I'll go with public health care <laughs> Exactly. So then you can. So, get anyways, into it. yeah, we have this appointment with the midwife, and she says, you know, just come in every day, get the baby monitored. So basically, they would hook me up to this heart monitor, which again is stressful. You have to be there for like an hour. They listen to baby's heartbeat just to make sure that everything is fine. And of course, that's I agreed to doing that because of course I want the baby to be fine. Like I care about her more than anybody. So we we did that for like. Yeah, also, few days. yeah. Also, we got an extra ultrasound done. Yeah, we got an just extra. Just to check like that there is a good levels of placenta fluid, all that. We got that. Everything's flying colors. Everything's great. And again, the reason we're sharing this, I even want to share this. This is part of the birth because the birth is not just that one day. The birth is a process and it usually starts months before you actually give birth. It's just slow. And in some people it's faster. In my case, it was more slower and steady. But I just want to share this because I want you to, to know that you have options. Like so many people were like, oh, in France or in Netherlands, you cannot go be pregnant beyond 42 plus 7 and I'm sure you can you as a patient always have a choice just keep that in mind they work for you doctors cannot ever pressure you into having an operation or in, into being induced all of the things that they do is just recommend and of course you can then do research and I urge you not to just take my opinion or Alex's opinion or my experience but do your own research but always always keep in mind you have a choice and it's usually better to not be induced and also look into you know risks of being induced I think that's very very important but now let's get into the actual day of the birth because I you know <laughs> I could be talking about that part for a long yeah, time. Yeah, and I guess but even about the whole inducing part, I guess once 40 weeks were rolled over and the pressure started, we did try all the natural methods of uh, God, inducing spicy food, walking, <laughs> walking nonstop. But we're like, walk a like lot. Like you walk on, we were walking like Jumping 16 jacks. kilometers a day. It was pretty intense. Like everything possible and possible. But again, that's the thing. Do you know if they work? I think one thing that really worked, and I don't know, oh, the placebo effect. I had reflexology done the day before, and I also had a sweep done. And this is the most natural thing you can do to sort of induce labor. It's something a midwife would perform or a nurse just look into sweep basically vaginal sweep <laughs> basically they just do a massage in there and that might or might not there's the chances are small but it might actually induce labor so I don't know if it actually yeah. induced my labor but the next day I had the contractions become stronger and stronger and I went into labor but I think overall my whole opinion just as a third party and as a man yeah. as somebody just being part of this experience I just want to say I think from I think both our experience has been so far is that society has created this thing is like everything is a number and you're supposed to fall into this average and if you don't fall into this average there's something wrong with you and I think it's very important to understand that it's not just all about these averages sometimes you, you don't fit the average you don't fit the average same thing in school or anywhere else so that's why I just want to say even with these uh, extra things that we did sometimes I think you know nature knows best a lot of times and I think you you want to allow nature to do its course and to allow the child to come in as naturally as possible even in our case you know we, we, we did those things because there's so much pressure put on the system but if it wasn't that much pressure maybe we, we waited even longer who knows when it would yeah. come you never know without trying to do anything else so that's what I'm well, so now the birthday the birthday <laughs> it sounds like birthday so the the day of the birth um basically at midnight i realized uh, we took a bath and it's supposed to again help with labor and inducing labor we took a nice relaxing bath alex fell asleep i was sort of falling asleep and then like for weeks i was having sort of contractions i called them waves or surges because i was practicing hypnobirthing and in hypnobirthing you don't call them contractions because the word contraction in itself is not a really a positive word so wave is a better word to describe the experience that you feel as the sensation comes over and it's like a wave so it comes it peaks and then it goes away and you just always keep that in mind and you breathe through the, these waves or surges or if you want to call it contraction so at midnight they started getting stronger and stronger and because I've had them for so long I was like I don't know if this is the thing I don't want to wake up Alex he needs to sleep in case this is the real thing and thank you for that by the way that yeah, really helped that really helped I'm so glad I did that <laughs> so I just got up out of bed because I couldn't stay in bed I wasn't it was intense I went into the other room where my mom was sleeping and I just woke her up because I knew she said if you go into labor tell me I want to experience it with you so I woke her up and I basically just chilled with her for hours and hours 
so this is it it's happening i'm here with, with my mom and i think this is it i'm in labor it's been happening for weeks i've been feeling you know small waves i call them waves because i really want to do my best to avoid the word contractions because i see i think a wave or a surge describes this experience so much better it's like a wave that comes and takes over you and then you have to breathe through it but today it's exceptionally intense and quite frequent so i'm thinking this is it so before my waves now i wanted to quickly um, make this video. Alex is still sleeping. I'm letting him sleep. It's like 2 in the morning. What time is it, Mom? 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. So 3 a.m. I've been up. Well, I didn't really go to sleep. It started at midnight and I just came and woke my mom up. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I think it's happening. I am excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, very excited. And I'm like a person who didn't prepare for an exam because I have my hypnobirthing book and I'm like, I don't think I practiced enough to do this, <laughs> but I'm going to do my best. Just going to do my best to breathe slow in and out. We can do this. We will. We're a team. <laughs> Like, Probably three, four hours. So it started, you said, when did it start? It midnight? started right at midnight. And I was like, uh oh, this is kind of not cool because I'm not going to get any sleep. But in my imagination, the way I imagined this birth, I thought this is going to be super fast and easy. The baby just drops. <laughs> Alex picks it up like Hollywood movies, but the good kind of Hollywood movies <laughs> where not the, you know, not the doctor accepts the baby, but it kind of like happens. I mean, that was my dream. I thought like maybe it'll just happen on the way to the hospital, you know, just really quickly. Because I've heard of some stories where it happens like that, but that wasn't my situation. So 4 a.m., contractions, waves, whatever you want to call it, get really strong. And I think, okay, I'm going to wake up Alex because... And you guys were counting too, right? So you were Yeah, we were counting and it was getting sort of closer. And, I, and I, at that point, I just felt like I needed Alex to be with me because, you know, I'm not going to lie, it is painful, okay? I thought I'm going to be completely honest. And, you know, when I watched Layla's video or when I was there during Layla's labor, my sister Layla, in case you don't know, because she gave birth last year, she kept saying, this is so freaking painful. And I was like, no way, because there are some women who have birth and they say, oh, it was amazing. Like, it wasn't really painful. And a lot of women who actually practice hypnobirthing say that it wasn't painful. So I wanted to believe that it will not be painful. But it was. In my case, it was it was quite intense. And I don't know, maybe it's the baby's position. I'll get into that later. As you listen to my story, of course, I don't want you to be scared of labor or scared of birth. It's Understand just, that this is just experience. my experience. There's millions, billions of other experiences that are completely different. So as it was getting more intense, I woke up Alex. It was around 4.30, I think yeah. you woke me so up. And you're like, your memory of what happened No, you immediately wakes me up and she's like, I, th I think I'm on labor and whatever. I'm like, okay, cool let's do this I'm ready uh, yeah I was pretty like yeah you were really uh, yeah a great sport all right, all right, from the beginning this. I'm like oh it's early morning but I'm like whatever she's like she didn't sleep at all I'm like okay let's do this, this I also around. imagine I also imagine I'm like we'll start at like 9 a.m. we finish by noon and we're good <laughs> that was, that was it. you can plan all you want <laughs> I then went into the living room and we just started working together, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we have some footage, we'll try to put it in yeah. as well of, of, of those times. And, yeah, we and tried to film a bit, but everything was a messy as well, yeah. get into the details. So we Hello, so I woke up. I woke you up. Maybe you woke me up. We just took a nice little bath. It's very zen here. We're just enjoying ourselves and Mimi's doing great. Another wave. Oh, another wave. Oh, beautiful. We started counting the, the things I got an app. I think you downloaded it. This is a really good app. What was the app? I forget. I was so Maybe out of it that I, I don't I'll, I'll try to remember the app. The app was really great. It was way easier and allowed the, and then not to just calculate stuff. Because at first we were putting everything in the notes. And it would actually tell you when you're in active labor and then mm -hmm. that it's actually like happening. So it was a really great app and it was just counting us. So we were do that, did that for the next probably 
two hours or so mm -hmm. uh, and doing that and then I think it's six in the morning I told you to call the oh hospital. yes yes that's what that's what yeah so Mimi tells me to call the hospital so I call the hospital it was getting really strong and it's like six in the morning yeah, yeah, and I'm like, like it's already been six Mimi's hours like, like yeah, Mimi was like, I want to go to the hospital, and I'm like, I called the hospital, and I said, my wife is in labor, this is what's happening, these are the times, this is the frequency, and they're like, well, this is great, but I think it's too early, we believe you should really be, I think, having at least 90 second contractions happening at least three times in 10 minutes. Yeah, they won't, so yeah, you, we want you to stay, frequent. We want you to stay home as possible, because you don't want to, sometimes if you come to the hospital, you can uh, you can stop, because yeah, it's a whole process. Yeah, you can interfere with the, you know. Yeah, so like, stay as home as, as as much as possible, and that for me, I'm like, I oh, want to throughout the whole time. Like, I wanted a home birth. I'm like, let's just, let's just chill at home as as long as possible. I'll, I'll even deliver this baby at home. I'm cool with it. I don't know. At least in my mind, that's what I think. So then we just stay home for the next like six hours, and it's like noon already. So, this so it's is been 12. twelve hours in. I haven't had any sleep. The waves, contractions, whatever, are getting stronger and more painful. But they're actually, but at that point, they were actually quite uh, long. No, but they're long. But they're actually the frequency was actually like uh, it was actually getting they further were, apart yeah they so it was actually like so it wasn't right so then because i've been at it also since 4 30 in the morning with mimi and like i've been with it i'm playing Every, music yeah. i'm breathing with her i'm counting everything providing snacks tea the whole shebang whatever she wants and then moms are just kind of to the side the sun is rising <laughs> Mimi's doing great so far. How are you feeling? Good. Staying strong. <laughs> I can't say anything. <laughs> I'm too emotional. It's always great. But it's happy emotions. It's happy emotions. It's happening. Trooper, she's been really great. You know? Feels like it's been a while. <laughs> it's alright, it's not about the time. Slow and steady wins the race. So it's not, this is not a race. So it's just about you know, just taking it slow. So far, I think we're having a beautiful experience. You're doing really great. Thank You're you. being really strong. Thank you for being by my side. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate yeah. it. And it's such a beautiful day, like it's so sunny. Just grateful for that. And I'm grateful for even the three and a half hour sleep that I had. Mimi's been really great to me. And Mimi's running low, but closing her eyes. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> I had zero sleep. <laughs> yeah, so it's all right. Rest in between. Mimi's doing great. And then at that point, I, I started reading some stuff. I'm like, maybe this is not like not real labor. I know. <laughs> I remember. He's like, you're not in labor. So, so this I, is not labor. So I'm like, I, I mean, maybe this is free labor. I'm like, I don't think this is labor. And Mimi's like, I, if then she I like, was I guess she's, out. maybe because Mimi experienced a lot of pain. You're like, are you joking me? Like, I'm like, if this is not labor, then take me to the hospital and just drug me. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't say that. But yeah. I mean, it was very painful. So I was like, no, this is real labor. This cannot be Braxton Hicks or whatever those pre. Pre-labor. Pre-labor right? contractions are. This cannot be pre-labor. This is the real thing. Yeah. So at that point, um, I, 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 like I said, I, I started doubting the labor. I mean, you kind of I, maybe you got a little mad at me, or like not. No, because they say if you have a contraction and you cannot walk or talk through it, it's the real thing. Oh, okay. So I was like, I can. can do you see me? I cannot talk or walk through it. This is real. But you can take a lot of pain. That's why you still look pretty good. I look pretty good from the outside, but the inside. Oh. Okay. So anyways, cool. it's like 11 a.m. around 12. I, yeah, I, I, think, I, I, th I think I told you to call yeah, the hospital again. Yeah, but I think at that point you were going to say call you, so just go to the hospital. I think, yeah, we just uh, ended up Because it's been 12 hours since. I'm like, I'm telling you, they're, because I'm counting, I'm like, they're going to tell you you're too early. There's no point to be at the hospital.
hospital right now. But being just like, no, I want to be at the hospital. I think I'll, I just I'll wanted to be in one place where I can already relax because I, I was already in labor for 12 hours and I knew at some point I'll have to go into a cab or walk, but I thought when I couldn't walk there because I was getting them so frequently. So I just wanted a peace of mind where I can be in one place and just relax fully. So that's the, another reason why I wanted to go there because I just wanted to be in that place where I will eventually give birth. So. At 12 so, yeah. during the day, we finally head to the hospital. Yeah, it was like 12.30, I think. We went to the hospital. We see the, our super cool midwife um, from the NHS public side. She checks everything. She sees everything. She's like, I think she said I was uh, three, three centimeters. centimeters dilated, which is not technically active labor yeah. because I think you have to be four. But she said, I'll let you into the birth Center, center which again is amazing because they're not really supposed to let you in there past 42 weeks but because she's the head midwife and because she saw my case and she saw that baby was healthy I'm healthy pregnancy was not complicated she's like we'll make an exception you can use the birth room I was like hallelujah I can just go there relax go into the hot tub and mm -hmm. have my natural <laughs> birthing birth <laughs> So, yeah, so, so go, that's what we did. We go in there. It's the same room that they showed us when we were in private, yeah. meaning... It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. I don't it's, think it's, we filmed it's, it's, it's a, I don't know if we did. Uh, and the reason we I, I didn't film it, because I we think... We were planning to film. We were, we were planning to film, but, but the reality is like sometimes, I think, especially in these moments, you want you don't want to stress too much. You yeah. want to think less. So I, even though I know as much as you want, yeah, I probably really to, wanted to be documented, it camera, it, but I'm like, it's not, for, it's not the time for it. When I was going through it, I really felt didn't feel like yeah. filming. So, so I was like, I'm not gonna do it. Like yeah. if I don't feel like it, and if I felt at some points, we would. Like there's certain parts we film, but then other times I was so into the experience I couldn't even think about camera or filming. It just wasn't on my mind, to be honest. So, so yeah, <laughs> that's when um, you're in the room. You're now going for the next, from like I guess one one thirty to like six. Yeah. Six thirty, and we're still going at it, and Mimi's still going at it. So and this is 18 hours into the yeah. labor. The only progress that happened in that time while I was in that birth center room is that I was in the hot tub and I finally relaxed a little bit and the contractions were getting more and more stronger, the wave surges, whatever you want to call them. And I kept standing a lot. I kept standing and trying to like belly dance and like <laughs> move my hips, all these things that I've learned. And at one point, Alex's mom was like, you should sit down and relax. But I don't know why I felt like more powerful standing up. So I finally sit down, which I found very uncomfortable for some reason. But as I sat down and relaxed, my water broke and it felt like the most amazing thing. It like felt like I gave birth. It was such a relief. And there was like a sound, like a popping sound. And then all this water came out and I'm like, yes, finally. Like, it's a really great sign because to me, it signified that the baby actually wants to come out. Like it naturally happened. So then for the next few hours, I was expecting like things are gonna move a bit faster because the water broke. And when the water breaks, A, what happens is things become more intense because now you can really feel the baby because the water, you're start, starting to lose the water. And B, the baby's losing water, so it needs to come out sooner or later, usually sooner. But again, that didn't happen. Yeah, so then the midwife came uh, again, like this is now a few hours later, to check how Mimi is doing, because the whole time they were checking, but I, I think the- And I started I, I, to lose a lot of blood. I, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Point. But at the same time, I was, in the room was basically me, Mimi, my, our moms, and they kind of like let you be in this birth center. Yeah. And I think this is actually one of our, I think, not downfalls, but I think this is something well, that- like, like, this is something the thing that, is we were supposed to have yeah, a doula, yeah, yeah. but then our doula had some personal stuff happen to her. And because she had to do whatever she had to do, she wasn't able to attend the birth. Of course, I think if she was there, things yeah. would probably still be I, yeah. the same, but- You never know, but, so I was the doula basically. And, and, doula. And, and helping Mimi through this whole thing. But I honestly tell you, like my, from my experience, it, it, just even before we finish everything, I think it's so important just through this whole experience where I learned It's so important having a guide with you. I think so too. Because even with uh, Especially if like, your partner cause, cause, doesn't support yeah, you it, as much as Alex supported me that day exactly, I don't know what I would have done yeah, to be cause, honest. Because even if you have uh, Like the midwives at the hospital whatever it may be or the hospital staff They still don't know you as personally and the thing is here in the UK especially They don't really give you a midwife so you don't really know who you're yeah, working you don't have with an So you don't build person. a relationship with them so I think it's very important to, it's like if, random people coming if, in whoever you're working with for your birth I think it's very important I think for the future you know if they're the second baby we'll see <laughs> <laughs> not in the mood to talk about it at the moment <laughs> 
But I think it's very important to have somebody who's who, like a personal doula, someone who will we'll be with you from the whole birth, who you'll be very comfortable with. That you can and trust will then, and relax with. Yeah, who will then coach you through the actual birth because she's been through it so many times. Here I am, I'm doing this first time, Mimi's doing this first time. And these midwives that come in, they're like, yeah, cool, check in. I think it's important to have somebody who's there who's helping you do the proper you breathing. Because Mimi read hypnobirthing, practice everything, but like when shit hits the fan, sorry to say yeah. that, like you forget a lot of stuff. Yeah, you do. And it's so important to having that person to actually remind guide you, you remind you, to make you sure you're doing it properly. So that's why I think the, the really, one of the reasons why it, it didn't maybe go as planned is we didn't have this person, especially for you, who's had more experience, who can guide through and I, breathing. To be honest, relax. like I said that I, I did hypnobirthing, but I did it myself. <laughs> I didn't take any classes. I sort of like read the book, practiced here and there, but I wasn't religious or strict about it. I kind of just read it. I was like, this totally goes with how my own personal philosophy and I kind of trusted my body and I felt like things are, will just align. And usually in my life they do. <laughs> but not on that day. Um, so so well, we, we literally just finished, almost finished filming and we just realized that the camera wasn't working for like half the time. So, so we're gonna retell the story from where we sort of the camera stopped recording. Yeah, and Alexa's been really awesome. She's, She's been, been just amazing chilling. the whole yeah. time, just sleeping. So hopefully we have enough time okay, to tell so, the story. So we're at the part where the water broke, yeah, after so the, the water, okay. So the water broke, then basically what happens is that after the water broke, usually everything starts progressing faster, but it wasn't in my case. I was just starting to lose a lot of blood and then the midwife came to check me in and also I was starting to get this urge to start pushing the baby I was thinking I'm already at 10 centimeters dilated and ready to give birth but then the midwife came in checked me and she's like honey you're only at four you shouldn't be pushing so at that point she was starting to get a little concerned and she told us that we have to be transferred to the labor ward Basically, that was the end of my natural birth one. <laughs> hypnobirthing birth. Yeah, like they put me in a wheelchair and wheeled me there. Alex came with me. Our mom sort of stayed behind because they didn't let them in for some reason. So yeah, we go to the labor ward. There's another midwife there and a doctor. And at that point, guys, like I was just in so much pain. I was like this wild little animal screaming and on the floor and I just remember thinking to myself, I felt so grateful for all these nurses and all these midwives and the doctor who have to endure these people who are in pain and act so uncontrollable. Yeah, it's true human nature comes out, <laughs> like, the animal. Really. Yeah, like I felt like this lost animal and mind you this is like how many hours into the lake? It's, it's hours. like 18 hours, I'm exhausted and again I have this urge to push, I'm screaming, I'm pushing and the midwife is like, do not push. And I'm like, I cannot help it. I just want to push. And then the doctor came in and basically he looked inside and he said, okay, so this is what happened. Basically the baby is not facing the right way. She never fully engaged, that was the thing. And she wasn't properly turned. She was sort of pushing onto my lower back, which so is spine what- spine to spine. Yeah, so spine to spine, which is what made me feel like I was supposed to be pushing and it gave me that urge to push but he said if you keep pushing you're really gonna hurt all your organs like and it's just not good you yeah. cannot do that but again I couldn't help it at that point so basically they just gave us some options well you at that point he was like what's the fastest way I can yeah like maybe just I'll... help and, me and you're like and, and he was like, like hey if it's the c-section let's just do a c-section let's just get this over with like it's been too long I was long. just in so much and then I was like whoa, whoa, whoa let's let's take it easy no let's not go there Right, and, and this is where the doctor were really cool. They said, you know, C-section is not an option right now. Uh, you're still, everything's still fully fine. You're progressing okay. The baby's fine. Everything's fine. So what we're gonna do is, uh, what we recommend is an epidural at this point. And I said, is it possible that she still goes natural? They're like. Well, because he said he's still gonna have to, once I fully dilate, he's gonna have to turn the baby. And he said, it's gonna be so painful. like. It's gonna be way more pain than you're going through now and you're already freaking out. So I was like, give me the epidural, please. I'm in fully, just anything to take this pain away. It truly was like excruciating pain. Yeah, the guys came in who to do the epidural, this guy was super chill, like he was super chill. Like I felt like he was on epidural or drugs or whatever. He was, <laughs> he was an epidural he was just himself. like He was just really calm. You like, have to be. Super yeah. awesome. He's like, I'm just gonna put a needle there. 
do it. Everything will it'll be nice. And then he just explained everything so nicely. Everyone at that hospital, I just want to mention like yeah. all the nurses, all the midwives, every the whole staff that we had on that night. They were so amazing and that truly made my experience so much better and more relaxing and painful. I mean not painful. So more, <laughs> it, was, it was still painful. It was still painful, but it just like made me feel more comfortable with the whole experience. So I just feel really grateful for the whole staff. Yeah, so they said do the epidural, maybe relax. The whole thing with birth, just in general, and what I learned from this experience, once again, as an observer as being there, as a third party, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm just, as, yeah. I'm able to observe the situation, you're in it. The most important thing in birth is to relax and let the body do its work. If you resist, the whole thing will resist. So epidural will actually, would, why I think that would be a good thing for me as well, it will help you relax and to help you just let go. So they did it and said so they might be able to sleep and just relax. So they did it, you relax. But the reason I was also yeah. against epidural from the get go is because like, I've done my research and like, I know all the consequences of epidural or C-section and, you know, things that could go wrong. Like there's lots that could. And that's why I was like freaking out a little bit. But then I was like, at this point, it's like life and death. Like I just, I just want some kind it's of been relief. A long time, so yeah. I just, you know, chose to believe that everything is going to be fine. Millions of people get this done. You're going to be fine too. So at that point, uh, Mimi tries to relax and to maybe fall asleep at the, at the thing. I also try to just get some shut eye because it's just, it's really intense. Like you're, it's, yeah. it's not like you're so present. It's not even just you're awake for whatever, 18, 20 hours. You're, it's, you're intense. It's intense work. And especially for you, right? So that's when the nurse, she she keeps fidgeting all around the room and like going around, this monitor is not working, she's not doing, she's not really allowing us to really relax. Or and I have this IV, I have this water bag because I was dehydrated, the IV for the epidural, then this thing to check my blood pressure every like five minutes. So it was kind of hard to relax and fall asleep. Yeah, so after some time, the nurse is like, okay, we have to move rooms, the monitor is not working, it's not happening. So then they move Mimi in this bed and all the her thingies, they like bump into stuff. Like I, I'm like I'm worried that you know the epidural is gonna go too much and like she like get drunk. I, that's what I'm thinking. thinking about. Yeah, of course. I was like I don't want to like. <laughs> so they move to this other room. This room is even like hotter. The room, the the door, the window doesn't open. Like, it was everything. quite claustrophobic. Yeah, it was very claustrophobic. So she moves Mimi in there, but she's still fidgeting with um, oh, Alexis. Good. Yeah, all good. So she keeps fidgeting with everything, all the monitors are for like another hour. So for the whole time, I'm just saying like... I wasn't I able checking. to relax. Yeah, and that's where... But I the pain went away with epidural. Yeah. And I felt so grateful for, for whoever invented epidural. Because <laughs> it's miraculous. You just like don't feel it. You feel the contractions, but the pain was almost gone. Yeah, like you're still in pain, but it's not as intense. And you can see on a monitor, the contractions were still happening. So the progress was still there. Because the way the doctor they said that, Usually you progress about uh, one centimeter. You'll dilate every hour if everything is going normal. So we're there, there supposed to be for the next like, about six hours or so because there mm -hmm. were four to ten. So then this is where the climax of the. If this was a movie, this would be the dramatic climax of this. Well, the dramatic climax would probably be the birth, but this would be like the the, the thriller part. Yeah. So. At one point, all I remember, because they kept checking the heart rate of me and the baby, they look at the heart rate and then they say, we're going to do an emergency C-section now. And it was honestly, it was like a scene from ER or Grey's Anatomy. I don't know if you guys watch those shows. I used to watch them. And <laughs> it was like being in one of those shows. Basically, all that happened is that I realized somebody put like a shower cap, you know, those things, like those hats they put on you when they do surgery. I see there's one on my head. There's one on Alex. There's all these people coming to the room and they're like, we're taking you to the theater. I'm like, what theater? <laughs> but basically that's the room where they perform the surgery. It's like bright lights. So they wheel me into the theater. There's 20 people all, all nicely dressed in all those, um, you know, surgery outfits with their shower caps. And I'm like, what is going on at that point? Oh, I think she's yeah. Or maybe she's still sick. Hey, Alexa. At that point, I'm shaking uncontrollably and just like freaking out. I'm like, this is getting better and better. Alex, we're just gonna finish this point and we're gonna we're gonna get you some milk. <laughs> so cute. She's like stretching her arms. Hi. Hello, Alexa. All right. So to 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 this climax moment, I guess what happens is like as they heavy dose the epidural so that Mimi can go through the C-section, Mimi is. Like your feelings totally go out. I totally lost sensation in my legs. 
Yeah, and completely then, like anything uh, below my belt area basically was numb, completely numb. Exactly. And Mimi started shaking because which they is said, freaky. Because they like, said because the whole I think experience was scary, but also yeah. they said that could be one of the side effects of the, of the drugs as well. Throughout this whole time, I'm like, okay, oxytocin, and that's what I did throughout the whole pregnancy. Oxytocin is is a love hormone, and that's the whole thing that actually got the baby in there, and also it's the whole thing that can get the baby out. It's supposed to relax and do whatever. So I just started. Kissing <laughs> Mimi, making out with Mimi in front of the, in this theater room, uh, just touching her, just hugging her. And telling me everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. Like he just kept repeating that through the whole time we were in the hospital or even before. He just said, everything's gonna be fine, everything's gonna be great. She's almost here, she's almost here. And I'm like, when is she gonna come out? Yeah. He's like, almost here, almost here. And then, yeah, he just starts making out with me. And this is in the beginning of the surgery, right after, well, they haven't started yet, but they gave me the drug, I don't feel my legs. And then they look at the heart rate after Alex started kissing me and making out with me, and they're like, the heart rate stabilized. That was the doctor. He said, we have to watch your heart rate and the baby's heart rate for the next 15 minutes. If it doesn't change, if it stays stable, then we're not gonna do C-section. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, I still have a chance. So for the next 15 minutes, I just keep giving Mimi extra love. I just keep like you know just supporting her positive like everything whispering, yeah whispering, little whispering, nothing it's fine and 15 minutes later the doctor calls it off and says okay we're fine go back to the room everything's good so we go back to the room and i'm like oh my god this is the second chance I'm like we got this and i'm we thinking can... in my head how am i ever gonna push this baby out because i don't feel my legs i don't feel anything <laughs> so mimi at this point is already right, once we're back in the room and we're, now that they're trying to readjust her and put everything together she's like what is this like i'm so tired i'm so exhausted i just want this I'm over like, with just get Let's the just, baby out she, somehow she, she even talks to the nurse can we have a c-section and this nurse is the same one that's fidgeting around she was actually like she saved the day and so she's like, honey, don't worry. You're gonna have this baby naturally. Everyone Everything's was gonna be so great. sweet and supportive. So supportive. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, we're almost there. We're like 80% there. We're, we're, we're already there, what's happening. So I'm just at this point. I was just too exhausted to think straight. Yeah, and now that I, I like, from that whole experience of C-section, I, I now am monitoring the, the heart rate monitors. Cause I know, I'm like, I don't want the C-sections. So I'm, I'm monitoring the heart rate monitors. I don't know the baby's monitor, I know Mimi. So I know what's critical and what, oh. Okay. Get, her, get us there because I've seen it happen. What so I'm like, was the critical? I think it was like uh, under 100 or something like that uh, beats a minute. For baby. For both. The reason they were fidgeting the whole time is that Mimi's heart rate and baby's heart rate was like identical. Which is and, not supposed to happen because they, her heart rate is supposed to be almost like double mine. Yeah, so they couldn't really detect and that's why they were fidgeting the whole time and, that, and, and that's not helping really Mimi relax. So about an hour later or so as I'm still talking through Mimi, trying to relax her, Mimi's just like exhausted. Mimi was like, uh, call your mom to come here. So I would call her mom. Yeah, I don't know. At one point, I just felt like I wanted more support to be there because I could tell that Alex was getting exhausted. Like he took every breath with me, every breath, every contraction, he was there. So I could tell he was getting really tired. And I just felt like it would be great to have another person with us who could be supportive and like some love energy, some feminine energy. And Alex's mom was so sweet. I didn't want my mom to be there because I know my mom would be freaking out already. She was probably home not sleeping and just freaking out. So I just needed some calm and peaceful energy. So we'll call Alex's mom, she comes in. And it's just probably like 2.30, 3 a.m. Yeah. Just starts yeah. massaging. And this whole time, like I said, the whole uh, thing, like I said, the whole process is about relaxation. And for Mimi, because it, the whole environment, like I said, it's not induced to being in a hospital, all this happening, it's not really helping yeah. you relax. And I said, even me as a really calm guy, my heart rate was, was going up like crazy. So I can only imagine Mimi going through- the Alex's the heart rate is usually like 45 <laughs> beats per minute. So I can imagine how Mimi's was also not in the ideal environment. That's how a lot of times these things end up in C-sections or anything else because you're just not able to relax. And the you whole, freak out and, the whole and then they birth, freak out. Yeah, and the whole birth process is about relaxing. So I guess, so this is around like probably 3.30 now, whatever. My mom comes in, she's just massaging Mimi's legs that don't feel like anything. <laughs> and, 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 and they were so swollen too. Yeah. My legs look like, felt like nothing, but they look like massive. Yeah, and Mimi still, she's like, I, like I'm just so tired. I just wanted to. So and, I, I, and I'm like I'm I'm hitting her back. I'm like it's fine. We're almost there. We're we're doing it. Like my, I just keep in, my coach. Yeah, I just keep encouraging. Like that's why I think it's so important to have a coach or somebody in your life like that. But then what happens is Mimi starts shaking still a bit, and I I still relax her, and then she falls asleep. 
for like 10 minutes. This is minutes. the first time probably you fell asleep in like this 24 like hours 24 or so. Hours, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's the first time you fell asleep like in 24 hours. And then I'm like, oh my God, yes, it's amazing. Like you, you can just see like, just me just fully gave in and just relaxed. But the thing is the nurse keep fidgeting. I know like it's easier to wake her up if they keep fidgeting. So I go outside of the room and I tell the nurses, cause I see the heart rate dropping right away. Mm. Cause you fully which is, relax. Which is what happens when yeah. you fall asleep. That's a good cause thing. Cause you fell asleep. However, I said, I, I go to them outside and I said, hey guys, Mimi fell asleep. This is the first time she needs to relax. Like just, I understand that right now the heart rate may not be on the baseline, but I'm telling you everything is fine. She's just sleeping for the first time. That's why it's not the baseline that you guys created. And like, well, we don't know, whatever. So I'm, I'm kind of stalling them. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like stalling them. And I'm like, come on guys, like, just, yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing, yeah. So then five minutes later, like, no, we have to check, they come in, they're, they're checking And they walk me and, up all this. Yeah, and, and the heart rates are down, right? So after five minutes of fidgeting, so you, just, you had probably 10 minutes of sleeping, they woke you up, and then the heart rate's like, at a, like, that almost critical level. So I'm like, and oh, to me, I'm like, yeah, I'm that's... like, I thought it was they're gonna say again. <laughs> Let's do yeah. a so I'm like, oh my god, I really don't want to go to the theater. I really don't want to see <laughs> section. So I'm like, we're I'm worrying like, too much into. I'm the like movie. to the main nurse that was there. I'm like, just check her. I'm like, examine her, see that how everything is going right now. Like, who knows? Because the last so time you told her to check. Yeah, because the last time, previous ch time she checked, I think you were at seven, and she's like, there's no way. I'm like, just check. Like, just like, uh -huh. just check. So she checks, and she's like, she's fully dilated. That's crazy. Right? It's like we need to push. And Mimi's like. <laughs> Yeah, because I was out of it. I fell asleep. I woke up. All I could see is like there was this a bit of an emergency in their faces. I thought it's because of my heart rate or the baby's heart rate was dropping. It was. That was. But, the, but like I could see it's like now or never. Honey, we're going to do this now. And I'm like, how the hell are we going to do it? I don't feel anything. It means <laughs> like... She's like, I don't feel anything. So again, everything is happening so fast. The doctor comes in, this amazing midwife, which was so great. And she's like, now on a count of 10, you're gonna push. And I'm like, what am I pushing? I don't feel anything. She's like, just push it as if you're constipated. And he's like, and I'm like, I don't get constipated. <laughs> but obviously that was the thing. She's like, just imagine you're diving. I'm like, I don't dive. Like, <laughs> anyways, they were giving all these examples and like, I couldn't figure out how I can do this without having the feeling, the feeling of my legs, the feeling of that area of my body. And then at one point I asked her like, do I just imagine it? And she's like, yeah, just visualize it. Just imagine, do, just do whatever. Trust me, it will work. And I started just visualizing it as if I'm doing it. And I was also thinking to myself, I mean, there's people who don't have sensations in their legs and they give birth somehow, like they must some way be able to push the baby out. So that's my case at the moment. <laughs> But you know, it was just, it was kind of funny and not funny <laughs> and like, I'm here pushing a baby out, not having any feelings in my legs or, you know, down there. So yeah. I, I kept doing it and... And I'm doing it with Mimi yeah, as well. Like, and the nurse is also helping her. She's like, honey, we got this, you, you're almost there. And she's really there. And, and I'm she... doing it and feeling like nothing is happening, but they like give me feedback. They're like, yeah, yeah it's working. <laughs> and I'm like, how is it working? <laughs> Like, it's crazy. It's fascinating. It's so magical in a way that you are able to do something with your brain when you don't feel it. To me, that was the most incredible part of it all. In a way, it was sad because eventually when she did come out, like, I didn't feel it. But at the same time, she came out and that was, that, that was what mattered at the end of the day is that she came out and everything was amazing. It actually happened pretty fast in my memory. Was, you know, I think, it, I think it was still it probably take. 15 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. most likely. Yeah. And there was a lot of pushing involved. Yeah. And in um, the end, and, and although, I, to although and I remember too, I, I push. I mean, it was like, I'm not supposed to push. Yeah, because I'm in you're supposed to breathe it up. And I'm like, oh my god, but it's at like, that point, but at that point it was really like it was either this, it was either or a C section. And it was it was getting to that once again, because the whole time like you're on this critical thing where they might take you to C section anytime. And Mimi's so many of her your friends I know they had C sections. Yeah. But it's just you wanna avoid it. You wanna if be you able can, to if course, you can, there's yeah. just so many benefits to delivering because a baby. The healing is yeah, harder. And the and healing and everything and the and connection the and the, the bonding. So I was, that's why I was really pushing for it. And midwife literally was, pushing for and it. I think the most important thing that I really want to draw attention there, I think it was Sarah was her name, mm -hmm. uh, the main nurse. She really cared. Like she really wanted Mimi to deliver this baby naturally, naturally yeah. right? And like through, 
vaginally, right? She really wanted it and she didn't want you to have a C-section yeah. either. So I think having just in general people who really care like about their job. Like they looked out for me. They were looking out for you yeah. for the best. When I wasn't even looking out yeah, for myself. Yeah, they looked out for the best of Mimi. And you know, that's what happened. So with pushes and the doctor came and they helped. The doctor me. was very kind and sweet Yeah, the too. doctor was very kind and sweet and they helped out and the whole team together. They already started preparing like things for the baby and everything. We're like, oh, we're almost there. And so yeah, so so then yeah, they still had to perform an episiotomy, which is basically they help you, <laughs> given the situation and the fact that it was hard to push because I didn't feel anything. <laughs> he helped me out, obviously. Also, I guess he turned the baby around, cut down there, then sewed it back, <laughs> and then she came out. And like all I remember is them putting her here and her crying, and it was like it was crazy. Like it was just I don't know. Like you just lose words. Yeah. I just remember looking at Alex and like crying. Like, and to, it's just like such an emotional moment. To me, for some reason, I felt really calm. Like I felt calm, but I, it was kind of like emotional at the same time. I just remember like, because I wasn't crying before, but then as soon as they put her down, it's just like tears came out. Yeah. And you couldn't even <laughs> see her properly. I so. couldn't see her. I couldn't feel anything, which again, like so many women say like, that's like the climax for them is when the baby comes out, that relief. It was sad, obviously, because I didn't feel that. But at the same time, you know, the ultimate thing is that I was healthy, she's healthy. The whole experience was finally over. Yeah, exactly. And, and we still like, all right, you want to cut the cord? I'm like, is it still pulsating? Let it pulsate. We're gonna let it pulsate. Then cut it. I cut it after. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, yeah. So then they they said the placenta looked awesome, amazing. It was a healthy placenta. Yeah. Everything was great. She didn't um, have long hair or like overgrown nails. She was not an overdue baby. She was completely. Oh, she's so long. Hair. She has nice hair. Well, she has nice hair, <laughs> but it's like they say that it's like a no. Little... She looked yeah, the baby. Looked... Yeah, it it did not look like it's an overdue baby. It's just again to tell you guys, anyone who will be 42 weeks or over 42 weeks, it's your choice to have the baby at whatever point you want to have it. Um, of course, do your research. So that was it. That's the whole experience. <laughs> I'd like for you to meet Alex the love. <laughs> it's really great to be here, little guides. Right? Oh, she's taking me out. <laughs> so wonderful. So grateful for you. Yeah. The little bonding moment. Wow, she's so aware. Alex. I know. <laughs> so wonderful. Baby. She's still sleeping. She oh is God. such a wonderful angel baby, guys. We've been filming this for like two hours, probably. <laughs> she's amazing. It's like we talk to her sometimes, and I honestly believe well, we talk to her all the time, not sometimes. <laughs> honestly, I feel like she understands. Like sometimes, like she'll be a bit fussy, and I'll tell her, I'm re I really need to eat right now. Is it okay? I'll just put you down. I'm gonna have some food, and she completely calms down. It's like, or now, like we're filming, so we're like, we're gonna film it. Like you know, it would be nice if you could nap, and like she's napping. Like she usually would be eating right now. So it's it's so interesting how she's just super awesome. She's just the best baby ever. Yeah. So overall, Mimi still did it. I did it with you. Yeah, and we're really proud just to just, like I said, I'm really grateful for grateful, everybody yeah. in the hospital. and. Yeah, it was Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. Really great team. NHS team was great. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And who says, yeah, public health care, like, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we had such a great experience and even with everything that went wrong I'm just grateful that I'm fine she's fine and also I think it's important the biggest lesson that I've learned is that if things don't go to your plan don't stress about it that's life you know a lot of times things will not go according to our plan I think what's important in that time is to use what you have learned is to do your best to relax to stay positive I honestly did my best I was just exhausted at some point and of course ready to like give up but I never fully gave up I just kept thinking in my head everything is gonna be fine everything is still gonna end fine and even if I'm not gonna have my natural hypnobirthing birth it's still fine like this happens and people are fine and you're gonna be fine so keeping that positive mindset regardless of what happens I think is so 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 important and of course you helped me with that. Thank you. Yeah, fully.
So that's all. That's a very long video, but um. And we didn't give up because, like I said, we we filmed almost all of it, and yeah. we're like. Most. Had to redo it, but that's fine. A lot of you guys have asked to hear the story. I'm sure a lot of you will find it, you know, interesting or maybe you've gone through similar experiences. If you have, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys if you're pregnant or if you've had babies before. If you've had a pain-free birth, I'd like to hear from you too because I still believe it's possible. It's just in my case, it didn't happen. I would still like to believe it's real. <laughs> so yeah, that, that is it. Um, We'll show you Alexa now what? while she's peacefully sleeping in was, her little yeah, crib. Was, I thought she'd wake up so we could actually show you, but I'm actually happy she's sleeping because <laughs> sleep is good for her. She's so cute. So this is Alexa Love. You make a little angel. Yeah, Alexa. My little sister. <laughs> she's like she's like fully relaxed. She's fully relaxed. <laughs> Okay, bye. Bye.